Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship. Thank you for joining us. We are virtual only. We're based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. The phone number works if you'd like to contact us. We do the thought behind the thought. John Heller does the best job on the news. I like to do a magazine show, which is the philosophy of eschatology, what you need to know, your reality, our existence. We weave in some prophecy and news events and things like that. We're solving Revelation chapter 6. We're dealing with the seven seals. I believe they're opening. I believe things are changing. I believe we have a window of time before things get truly horrific, and I believe the seals are part of that process. So let's discuss it. You know, we always ask this question, are the seals the birth pangs? Have they already begun to open? What's going on? I'm arguing that little tiny snippet on the right-hand side, lower right-hand side, that says 2023 Magnetic Anomaly, Aurora Records, Unexpected KP, you know, because... um. In the last few days here, we had a tiny little solar storm that erupted into major auroras. And so I'm saying that that's part of the seals. And if you're not thinking about the cosmological aspects of what's going on, then you're really not thinking about the end of days. So I'm going to be talking about that too. So the seven seals of Revelation, you kind of list them out. Different people list them different ways. The main thing is let's get on and talk about it and move through the slides. So once again, we show you the Bible. We show you the prophecy. We show you the fake news. No, we show you the real news. And we're doing the philosophy of eschatology. So another picture of the seals, different interpretations. Um, I'm saying instead of conquering, it's overcoming. Uh, instead of, well, it's take peace. That's actually pretty accurate, but I call it la coq shalom, snatch peace. Uh, the black horse is going to be, and that's a bright red horse, which is interesting. Uh, and, and so uh, then black horse is crazy inflation. Pale horse is actually four plagues. The fifth one, the fifth seal is martyrdom. And the sixth seal is, I'm arguing it's something to do with cosmological things. So he says signs in the heavens, sun, moon, stars, sky, day of wrath. No, but, but wrath starts at that point in time. Sure. And then silence for the seventh seal. So basically I'm arguing silence the whole way through this video. And I've always argued that, that when you go through the seals, they open up silently, they increase silently, they, they increase silently by side silently. Um, it's, it's really the hush of expectancy about the verdict to be pronounced on the guilty. The prayers are from the believers who will be martyred by the Antichrist. Well, they'll be martyred in general. Uh, and then, and especially during the Great Tribulation, yes. The last three and a half years of the end time tribulation, yes, this is from Wiki. It's interesting. So the the trumpet and the bowl judgments, I believe, occurred during the, the last seven years. Uh, and so is, this is wacky. I just wanted to point out the silent part. OK, everything's going to be silent. You're not going to know where you are unless you're really carefully checking things out. John Heller's a great guy. I recommend his shows. You know, if you want to watch his, his videos, he didn't present this morning. And so that's that's a rarity. I'm arguing that if you play with seals, play, come on, if you open up and unroll seals, you would never do this to a seal. You'll break it. You'll literally fleck your lettering off. So you would never do that. But, you know, this is an interesting picture that John likes. Um, he's probably never held a Torah scroll in his life, and I have repeatedly. And I've viewed the Torah scrolls. I don't read them very well because it's it's a different style than the standard uh, uh, Babylonian Hebrew, or, yeah, Hebrew, um, the Aramaic script. It's, it's very difficult to read unless you practice at it, and I haven't. But I do agree with him here that as the first seal opens up, it gets, it increases, and it increases alongside the second seal, which increases, and then the third that increases, and the fourth, and that seems to be happening they're magnifying does he know the cosmic changes no that's fine i'm saying when you look at time and intensity intensity you have to look at the magnetic anomaly you know the the, the uh, magnetosphere thinning the auroral records the unexpected kp things where you know low kps produce big auroras that's a bad sign people and so we really only have x amount of time to go uh based on what what is bad in our cosmos right now, okay? So Stan Johnson, I've followed him since probably 2008 when I first met him in Minneapolis. Uh, maybe it was 2010, but, but I followed his work. Um, I disagree with him. So he's saying, Terry Bennett says, on October 5th, Yom Kippur of 2022, the first seal opened. And he said that an angel came and literally told him, I'm saying he's lying. I'm calling him a liar. Yeah, I am. Byron Searle, I know he's a liar. Fifth seal is open. 
Who knows? Byron's always been a liar. Vicki Parnell, I'm going to show you a picture of her in a minute and, and say she has pineal gland problems. I think her prophecies are pineal gland prophecy problems. Okay? So this is Stan, Stan again. Uh, timeline to Armageddon, 2-7 of 2024. I liked it because at least they're talking about the seals being open, which is what I preach. Stan does not know anything about cosmophysics, cosmic physics at all, and so he wouldn't talk about it. But he really believes that he is the finest expert at, at what's going on in the world. I'm saying that I know a little bit more than he knows in certain areas. He knows certain other things. I mean, he's been in prophecy for 30 years, but, but he gets things wrong because he cites the wrong people. So let's start with the generals on this page, and let's go through... Uh, <laughs> Chris Reed Ministries, which is uh, Terry Bennett. Terry Bennett, I'm sorry. Terry Bennett on the upper left-hand side. I call him the Cheshire Cat of Prophecy. He's always got the big smarmy grin going on. And and I don't think he hears from God. I Or maybe he did, but he stopped. And so he's always trying to find somebody that he can mooch off for prophecies. Same thing with Chris Reed. I don't think he's hearing from God at all. And he's mooching. Rick Joyner is one of the worst people ever in the history of the world. He is part of the Knights of Malta and Todd Todd uh, Todd Bentley Blech. and and Bill Johnson. Disgusting people. I would want nothing to do with them. Cindy Jacobs. I want nothing to do with her. And so Morningstar Partners. They don't hear from God, so they mooch from people that do hear from God, and they're constantly combing for things. So I can't stand them. But, you know, this is where we're at right now. We are told that false prophets will uh, proliferate, and they are. So this is what you're into. Uh, Chris Reed is really thinking he's so tough and cool, and he doesn't hear from God. Or if he does, he just he's so money-driven, you know. And, and so they believe they're—we call it New Apostolic Reformation— and they believe that they are rebuilding the earth so that the Messiah can arrive. It's all lies. It's all lies. Okay, this is Vicki Parnell, uh, 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 go forth Parnell, and she, look at her forehead, look at the pineal gland area, and tell me that there isn't something wrong and that she's aging very fast. She puts out a prophecy every five minutes, okay? I'm in literally fast. And so, uh, and, and I don't think she's hearing from God. Maybe years ago, but she doesn't talk about cosmology at all. Chuck Pierce doesn't talk about it. Lou Engel doesn't talk about it. Mike and Cindy Jacobs don't talk about it. Chris Reed, you know, Jeremiah Johnson. He's the guy that said, Jeremiah Johnson said, oh, Trump will be reelected in 2024, or 2020, rather. And that's a lie. But you can't shame him. You can't shame a charismaniac. You can't shame any of these people on this page. Okay, you just can't shame them. And so they're not talking about the magnetic anomalies. They're not talking about cosmological signs. Uh, any of the, oh, Patricia King, Katie Souza, you know, all of these people, they, they're just making money. And unfortunately, Redeeming Love Church is right down the block from my place. And they, they allow any liar and any shenanigans to go on. They, they just have no discernment. So why do I trust these people then? Because they are introducing new information. They are either great researchers like Ben Davidson, or I truly believe now that, that uh, John Paul Jacobs, uh, Jackson rather, John Paul Jackson actually saw things that were cosmological and that he's nailed things down. And I never trusted him for years. David Wilkerson, I've always trusted him, okay? And he saw cosmological things. And I will list off those things more specifically in, in another video. I don't like to go much over a half an hour. Rachel Baxter, why? Because other people are mooching off her, okay? I think she's, so people ask me, why are you citing Rachel Baxter? Why are you citing some other people that we don't like? Rachel is hearing from God. Now, she's still got this infancy phase going on where she hasn't been a Christian of this nature for years. Uh, it's been about 10 years. And so, um, when you have these people like Terry Bennett and Chris Reed that want to mooch information off her, she's just a nice person. So they're mooching. And and at some point in time, she already got rid of Michael Rood, who's a really good moocher, and, and she needs to get rid of these guys. Okay? I am one of the few guys out there, too, that is citing original information and cosmological information. So that's why I'm drawn to these particular people. 
sorry, that's that's why. Now here's a guy that bashes me regularly. Uh, he, you know, on Hebrew roots and stuff like that on Facebook. Uh, this is Richard H. Perry, and he says you're you're dis- you're talking about statements that that are not described in Scripture. Do not go beyond what is written. But he does it all the time. He goes beyond all the time. So Richard Perry wrote the last days, an apocalyptic look into the future, and it's ugh, the complete idiot's guide. <laughs> I would never write anything like that. So he's saying the first seal is the U.S. starts the war on terror. That's not in the Bible. The second seal, Iran starts World War III. That's not in the Bible. He's saying it's 2024. So interesting. Uh, church wakes up, whatever. Uh, Russia starts World War IV. That's the th- he, he's just all over the place. And he just trashes me and trolls me all the time. So, and he doesn't look at magnetic anomalies. He doesn't look at cosmological signs. He's just making stuff up. Okay, so what am I getting at? Let's run through the seals real quick. Once again, Zechariah 6 confirms the directions. So you have, to, in order to know Revelation 6, you need to know Zechariah 6, okay? And no one hardly ever cites that, okay? And the colors and the, the horses, things like that, the directions are really cool in terms of the Greek and the Hebrew. There are certain specifics that are just wonderful in the Septuagint that play all the way through. Okay, so the four greatest events. And you're going to say, well, How do you think, Joel? How do you think that these are great events? I'm saying that I'm trying to get into the mindset of Daniel the prophet and John the revelator in Revelation and and think their types of thoughts. And what would be the most important for them? They are to me. They are ritually impure. They want to go to Jerusalem. They want to be a part of the holy, which is the sacrificial system. And they want to get ritually pure, which is tahor. And they have no process for doing that because they're outside of Jerusalem, and they can't go back to the festivals, and they lament things like that. So relinquishing the Temple Mount on 6-6 of 67 is the biggest sign seven, since 30 Common Era or 70 Common Era when Yeshua died and resurrected, or say the Temple fell. Okay, The biggest event is that we no longer have a sacrificial system. We never have. We have no way to get to Hor. And so John and Daniel would be miserable today. So that's the big one, okay? Then the next one was 9-11-2001. Yeah, absolutely. That allowed Bush and the Cheney neocons to have multiple reasons to invade countries east of Jerusalem, okay? Then the third seal is 2012, and so uh, it's a Mayan year. Alice Bailey talked about it. Uh, Other people have talked about it. It's just during the, the summer of 2012, I was asking God for assistance to finish my book, and he sent the man to our Messianic shul in Hudson, Wisconsin. It's a first fruits of Zion place. Wonderful place, wonderful people. Um, But I left there because I wanted to start an eschatological shul, you know, a Beth Hesed. So after Sukkot, but before the end of October, there will be a great storm. The signs will be snow and a broom. And that was the message from Chris given to the pastor and the elders. He gave it to me too. Uh, He wasn't supposed to, but he did. And he didn't die after that, so it wasn't First Kings 13. So anyway, about six months later, I talked to Mark, my friend, and I said, you know, what's this prophecy all about? And he said, well, read First Kings 12. And, and then I understood the divided kingdom, Jeroboam's false Sukkot, which occurred during that year of 2012, uh, Hurricane Sandy, all this stuff occurred. Obama was reelected, showing that we were divided. All of these horrible things, the aftermath, occurred on the last day, the last great day of the false Sukkot uh, in uh, uh, November 6th, I think it was, of 2012. And so that was your snow and the broom across the East Coast. And I have friends from the East Coast. They remember how bad it was in 2012. That was a sign from God. Repent. Okay. So now the jibby and the jibby jabbers, whatever that, you know what I'm talking about from 2020. I believe that that's the big four of peak death death that will culminate in 2 billion deaths by four plagues by 2026. And other people see that happening now over time. You're just going to see more of it. I'm arguing 2025 because of the problems with the magnetic magnetosphere, that it's thinning so badly that we can't go out and have a typical end times past 2040, 2050. It has to occur in the next decade or so. It just has to, because it's going to get so bad because of the magnetosphere thinning. Okay, so let's jump through specifically each seal. So I'm arguing again, the white horse opened up on 666 of 67, and I saw 
when the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, as it were, a voice of thunder, come and behold. And I saw, behold, a white horse, and he who was sitting on it having a bow, and that's Toxon. Yeah, I know it's related to 2020, and Keshet, but it should be more thought of as uh, uh, the bow of strength, okay? And so he had that bow. And unfortunately, he's changed the colors of the bow since 1967 as this new issue, social issue, has cropped its head up time and time again. You know what I'm talking about. And there was given to him a garland. It's not the typical type of a crown that you would think of. It's just a garland. And went forth overcoming that he may overcome. And this is Western civilization, I argue, because of the direction of Zechariah 6. So I'm telling you that weird things happened with Jews coming to Jesus in 1967 through 1973. And I was a part of many charismatic things from that time frame, 1967 to 1973. So I just, and Asbury, uh, their revival started out during that time frame. So I've been a part of these things many, many times. Okay, so what is happening then? According to this rare report, uh, the world is collapsing. The, the, whatever Western civilization was is ending. The pervasive reach, reach of terrorist organizations such as Hamas and the broader trend of, of this particular problem across the continent. that you, you can't seem to defeat it. It's going to cause fights and chaos and disorganizations across the world until Jesus returns. I mean, sorry, but that's what's happening. We are giving up Western civilization without even a fight. We're being overcome. We're not being uh, subdued. We're subduing ourselves. Okay? So, the second seal, the Bush family, the Cheneys, driving or snatching peace away from the world. Okay? And so I'm saying that that occurred uh, on 9-11 of 2001, and then continued on. And this is what they want. They want oil for peace, okay? So when the lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, come, and then another. So I'm arguing that the first seal is not the Antichrist because this is just another alos in the Greek. Horse came out, a fiery red one. Yeah, fiery red. That And that works in Zechariah 6 too. The rider was given power to take, that is, lakak, Shalom, snatching peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. It's a makira, and that is different than the fourth seal, which is a judgment sword. It's the word of God. So just keep that in mind. The swords are different in the seals. Okay. And then I opened the third seal, and I heard uh, within the living creatures, uh, the third of the living beings being say, come and see, and I saw a black horse. And the one sitting on it had a pair of scales. That denotes judgment in his hand. And that is found also in Zechariah 6, too. Okay? And I heard, as, as it were, the voice in the midst of the four living beings saying, a quart of wheat for a small amount and a quart of barley for a denarius. denarius. Uh, so that means that if you're a poor person, you can't afford wheat and barley. If you're wealthy and you buy rich oil and rich wines, you should not take advantage of and harm the poor people. That in the in the Greek is adikesis, which becomes lo avanim, which is don't willfully sin, don't be stingy and greedy against the poor when things get bad. And I'm saying that that's based on Obama and 2012, and the signs all match up with it, the prophecies match up with it. Your inflation is going to intensify. That's what I'm telling you. And I'm telling you, based on the Pew Research Center from May 23rd of 2024, the public's positive economic ratings slip. Inflation is still widely viewed as major problem. Thank you, Pew. That's a very correct report. And then on the far right-hand side, U.S. national debt spikes to $34 trillion. We can't, I mean, debt out the wazoo. I'm sorry, it's kind of gross, but that's what's happening right now. This is from Wolf Street. So in the middle section here, Adonai will open for you his treasure the sky to give your land its rain at the right seasons and to bless everything you undertake. You will lend to many nations and not borrow. Well, we're the opposite. So obviously we're under curse. And if you look at our weather lately, we're under a curse. Okay, the fourth seal, four plagues. So let's run through it. And keep in mind, I get into fights with other eschatologists all the time on this because they say the word gay, which in this case means the earth, it's only mentioned 
twice. It's not once, it's twice. But death is listed. The name of the rider is death, and he brings eight different versions of death. So look for death in this, okay? When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the living fourth living creature call out, come. And I looked, and there was a pale green horse. Yes, represents the first sign. Pale green horse means death, okay? So it represents death. And then the rider's name was Death. That's the second reference. The only horseman that is given the name, it's Thanatos in the Greek, which is death, okay? And then Hades is the third sign of death, which is hell, okay? Followed him. To them, all of them were given exousia, which is executive level delegated authority over a fourth of the earth. Yes, that's gay. But that means two billion deaths, to kill, that's the fourth reference to death with the um, Ramphea, which is a supernatural sword. It's a reference to death, okay? And it's worked in um, Isaiah 37, I think it was, where you've got 185,000 people dying by the uh, Ramphea and the Septuagint. So it's death, supernatural death. I would argue ethnic invasions. That's part of it. Then the sword, that's death. That's that's. Uh, that's, uh, oh, it's that supernatural Ramphea sword. Okay, sure. And and then the next reference is Limo, which is crop failure, which is famine. Okay, and death again. There's Thanatos again. So not only is named Thanatos, he brings Thanatos, death. So that's your seventh death reference. And wild animals causing death. Okay, Therion, small animals, could be biological warfare. That's eight times that death is listed, and so I'm arguing consistently it's always death. Okay, so once again, Ramphea is a broadsword, it's mass invasions, Limo is famine, crop failures, no fertilizer, things like that, Thanatos, or just killing off your animals for the sake of, they're burning chicken farms everywhere across the nation, okay? No fertilizer maybe, but Thanatos is death, it also could be war or cancers, Therion is animals, but really it's tiny animals. It could be biological warfare. I'm arguing that seems to be the date. Okay, 12, 19 of 2019 seems to make sense. I'll show you in the chart later on. Okay, so let's go on to the fifth seal, increased persecution against believers. I'm arguing that there's a sweet spot for this to occur, which is as the magnetosphere is thinning, and also certain signs will be blamed against believers. And so I'm arguing persecution is going to increase and just go off the Richter scale for the fifth seal. So, when the Lamb broke the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been put to death for proclaiming the word of God, that is, for bearing witness. They cried out in a loud voice, Sovereign ruler, HaKadosh, that's holy, uh, the true one, how long will it be before you judge the people living on the earth and avenge your blood? Each of them was given a, a white robe, which is a sign you can't be naked. I talk about this every week, and you can't have dirty clothes. You have to be given a white robe, and they were because they're martyrs. And they were told to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants who should be reached and their brothers who had been killed just as they had been. So that's Revelation 6, 9 through 11. When does it start? I don't know. But there is an odd section of Revelation 7, 9 through 15 that kind of talks about Sukkot. Of any point in time, because every nation, tribe, and people and language seem to be standing in front of the throne, and they're wearing, they're holding, they're, they've got the white robes, holding palm branches. That's a Sukkot time frame with the palm branches, and they shouted victory to our God, and and who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Now it is a later picture. There's this this after this way up at the upper left hand side. It, it, that's a meta in the Greek, which means how far out is it? I don't know. Meta means after. Okay, it doesn't give you a time frame. But basically, what I'm getting at is these people are coming out of the great persecution. They have their, they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That is why they are before God's throne. It seems to be a Sukkot reference. Okay, sixth seal. The kings even will discern this. Everyone will discern. So what's coming up? One, the sun will go from yellow to white to red to black, and then Micronova. And I'm still thinking it's going to occur in 2025. So then I watched as he broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. Micronovas caused that, okay? They will send out so much energy that you will have a great earthquake, okay? That will un unlock the crust and break the mantle free. The sun will turn black as, now it's not an eclipse, it's a final stage of the Micronova. Once again, it's going to turn from yellow to white to red to black, then a micronovus. So it'll turn in that final stage to sackcloth. In the Greek, it's sakos trichonos, 
which is a layered, like goat's shiny mohair angora. That's what it's going to be like. It's going to be a thin mohair coating of the sun, which will then cause the micronova. And it's worn in morning. Yeah, you'll be morning when this occurs. And the full moon became blood red, so they have to synchronize. The next one happens to be Adar 14, March 14th of 2025. The stars fell from heaven. That will be the dust in exploding off the sun. Uh, and they'll land on the earth and we'll see it. Okay, it'll be like meteorites. Micronova dust accumulation event, just as a fig tree drops its bitter winter, seems to be that time frame, figs, when shaken by a strong wind. Okay, so I'm telling you, these are the next nine blood moon eclipses. I'm telling you that it seems as though the 2025 ones are the most intriguing time for this to occur, but definitely one third of them are through 2026. So it seems like I've received a confirmation that we're going to go into the sixth seal in 2025. That'll be intriguing if it occurs. Okay, so the sky receded like a little scroll. It's a Megillah. Um, Megillah is different than a big scroll. Uh, so it will not be a worldwide situation at first. It'll be more like these the South Atlantic anomaly, which is a, well, it's massive, but it's literally a hole in the magnetosphere, in the ozone layer, okay? Um, and every mountain and island was moved, probably not that far, okay, from its place. And But yet you'll know it. You'll be frightened. Then the Earth's kings, the rulers, the generals, the rich and the mighty, indeed, everyone, slave and free, hid himself in the caves among the rocks and the mountains. When this occurs, everyone will know about it. So that's pretty much the end of the sixth seal, okay? So it's a small scroll. The, the anomalies are going to occur. Nobody talks about this. Nobody hardly. Just about five of us, okay? But I'm telling you that Ben Davidson talks about it. So his comment is, at some point, Earth's weakening magnetic field will be weakened so much that the planet will not be able to sustain even a moderate disruption in the solar wind. That occurred last week, people, okay? Uh, a, a moderate, a light, light solar wind came in and it caused massive auroras down in lower latitudes, okay? That's going to get 10 times worse and it's going to magnify over time. When that occurs, the grids will go down and there will be no more power as the sun continues ramps up towards micronova and the Earth's magnetic field continues to weaken. He's arguing a full micronova and there will be another dust event in the fourth trumpet and then a full mag uh, micronova during the fourth bowl. Okay, so Revelation 16, full micronova. So he's correct. It'll just ramp up to that big micronova. As Earth's magnetic field continues to weaken, cosmic radi radiation will bombard the planet more and more. Cancers will increase, things like that. At some point, the solar system will enter the point where the galactic magnetic reversal occurs. The sun will go dark for three days, followed by a solar micronova, and the planet will go like this. So you'll have a polar shift. Okay. So what am I ar arguing? All of this matches with observable data that we're seeing on a daily basis from the solar winds turning into winds that come through the magnetosphere very easily, kick off horrific auroras. I mean, you think they're beautiful, but they're horrific. It's a sign that we're in big trouble. So at some point in time, I believe in 2025, you'll see these events concurring, you know, between the blood moon and the, the micronova of the sun. You'll need to hide in a cave up high in the mountains or someplace safe. Okay. And everybody will know. So 2025 is intriguing because the Essenes, the sons of light, uh, they have their calendar. I'm telling you, it doesn't make sense for me biblically. It just doesn't make sense. But it is still intriguing in terms of the years. So let's look at it for the years, not necessarily the days. Okay? And and so their 50-year period, they say the last one, starts in 2025. And, and let's just test it out. Okay? So this is from Josh Peck and, and Ken Johnson. And, and and testing this stuff out. They're saying that the final one, that we would move our way into the final one, uh, which is, you know, 2025 to 2075, that that would be when Yeshua would be returning. Uh, he would return probably around sometime between that, 2025 and 2075. And then we would notice things changing. And generally he would come at the, the beginning of that new time frame, the new millennium so okay not millennium how about how about the new uh, uh jubilee cycle okay so the eclipses again this shows you march 14th of 2025 
September 7th of 2025, March 3rd of 2026, and then the ones far out in 2028, 2029, and 2029. Okay, that's it. Those are the big ones coming up. And then a bunch in 2022 or 2032, 2033. So I don't understand what's going to happen in terms of uh, the Jubilee. Is it going to be 2025? I don't know. But, you know, you'll see it occur on the Yom Kippur. So watch Yom Kippur. The problem is the Essenes Yom Kippur is going to be different than the ones that we would see because we're looking for the new moon, you know, for Tishri, the new moon of that. Well, and, and we have to set it off first by the new moon of Nisan. Well, the Essenes are saying September 26th and Yom Kippur is going to occur on the 10th of, uh, I mean, on um, the 2nd of October in 2025. How can they be that far apart? That's like six days apart, I think it is. So the bottom line is you're going to have to just test out both systems. You're going to have to watch both systems and see what's going on, especially this fall too, because it would be then the, the um, uh, Shemitah year. So let's see it on, this is Ken Johnson's calendar that he created. And so uh, it's dsscalendar.org, copyright 2020. Um, I'm seeing that the magnetic anomalies seem to match up with this pretty well. But the problem is these day counts are just psychotic. So the eclipse on the lower left-hand side is going to be on March 14th. You know, that is that that uh, total eclipse of the of the moon, uh, blood moon eclipse, rather. And so that doesn't match up with the Essene calendar at all. And then Passovers are completely separate. Okay, so here's Passover. And this is upper middle. Okay, Passover, April 1st. And then the actual Passover is going to be April 12th on the full moon, because it has to be. So why would the Essenes be uh, that far off? I mean, look at that. That's 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 20 some odd days. No, it's 10 days off, but it's a huge difference. OK, uh, 11 days off, maybe. 11, yeah, 11. Um, and then in the fall, it won't be as far off. Why would it change so much? I don't understand that. So I'm going to recommend as we come up to these types of days, this is 2025, and this is, you know, the spring festivals and then going into the fall. It's way different, people. And and so I've never really analyzed it that carefully, but it doesn't work biblically, okay? You would never do this biblically. And I don't understand why the Essenes are claiming that they're bib biblically superior and they're not honoring what the Torah says. Okay, so now we're at the end. Uh, and, and I want to cite this message from Cindy. Saturday, just before I woke up or became wide awake, this morning the Lord gave me a vision, and I was not at the home I live in now. I was at a motel room as if I were observing what was happening. In the vision, I saw a piece of paper coming down from above and softly landed on something like a desk or a countertop. This paper had a number at the top of it, but I couldn't see the number and make out the writing on this paper. Some Someone said, because of this number, this is going to happen. I know this person was talking about the rent going up, which is inflation. Another piece of paper came down from above with a number on the top and, and some writing, but I wasn't able to see the number or what was written again. And I heard the person say, your rent is going up again because of this number. This happened again a couple more times at a rapid pace with the paper coming down from above with different numbers on them. And the person saying, there are going to be more, there are there has been more findings. Your numbers have changed and your rent is going up even more. Okay. The last piece of paper that came down from above with a number and writing, it was different. This time I was allowed to see the number and the number was 303. I still couldn't see the writing, but it was for what was found that could be used against people to change their credit and their social scores. Okay. I knew in the vision that this had everything to do with the new credit and social score ratings that were beginning to happen. I knew we Christians were being squeezed out of the system at an alarming pace. I woke up or came to with the year 2025 on my mind. I'm not saying that this is the year when the beast system starts. I'm actually saying it's more like 2029. But I do believe that the year 2025 starts a very difficult hardships for everyone from what the Lord has told me. Thank you, Cindy. Interesting. So 303 means the Diocletian persecution. So this is the persecution against Christians. Horrible, horrible persecutions. And that seems to be part of this process that I think she saw.
Okay, so where are we at? We're in the birth pangs. We are not in the tribulation or the great tribulation. We are waiting for the seals to open up. I'm arguing that potentially the sixth seal could be 2025. It makes sense because as you see the cosmological signs increase in severity, you you can't get to 2040 people. You can't. You can barely get to 2035. Okay, so it seems like we need to get ready for some horrible cosmological signs. Okay, you need clean garments. You need to be ready for some wedding, uh, the wedding with Yeshua on Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur or Sukkot of some future year. Clean garments, people. Can't be naked. Thank you very much for your time. I'm sorry I ran late today, but this was a fun meeting. Hopefully we'll see you next week. God bless.